Hey everyone, this is Heather Lawton and welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. Today we are diving back into the coaching journals and this is our fourth in a series. You can listen to episodes 192, 196, and 201 if you would like to get caught up. It's not imperative, but it could give you a general idea as to what our clients are working towards. The coaching journals are to elevate members that have agreed to share their experiences and let us follow along with everything they are working on in their business. This includes their thoughts, ideas, plans, strategies, along with challenges and obstacles. They share specifics on number of clients, how they're getting those clients, sales goals, and their actual numbers in terms of what they are bringing into their business. They get a business coaching call with me every month to talk through what's happening in their business. And the goal of the coaching journals was not only to help these two photographers, but to share with everyone what it takes to build a successful pet photography business. And once again, those two photographers are Christy Baker. You can visit her at christybakerphotography.com and Monica Adelsteinson from pupandmephoto.com. If you are seeking assistance in developing your business, please consider exploring our Elevate program. I am extremely <laughs> enthusiastic about guiding you through any hurdles you may encounter and, of course, supporting you in creating a successful and flourishing pet photography business. And what makes us different from any other photography business program is that, like everyone else, we provide you with the checklists and the strategies but we also know how to support you when none of it works. Essentially, when the standard approaches fall short, we step in with tailored guidance and support to address your specific challenges. You can check out Elevate at hairofthedogacademy.com slash elevate. Now on to our coaching journals. Hey, Monica. What's happening out there? Things are moving <laughs> very quickly. Seem to be yeah. experiencing a lot of success, a lot of action. Give us an update. Yes. Yes. So a little update. So like June, I didn't hit my big revenue goal, but it was still like huge. So we made over $10,000 in revenue last month. I know in June. Amazing. And although like I had that feeling of like, I didn't hit my goal, right? I didn't hit that goal that I set for myself. So you know what I did? <laughs> I used the gap in the gain process and I looked at my revenue from a year ago and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> my revenue is like way higher. Like it's so much fun to look back. So I wrote down every revenue month, like wrote it out so I can compare it to my, my previous self. So that made me feel better. <laughs> what was it last year? Do you remember? Oh, I have it right in front of me because that's the kind of person I am. So um, last year it was $4,836. Oh, well, this then, year. Okay. Yeah. This year is $10,662. Well, here we go. <laughs> then that's yes. definitely a gain. When you compare yourself yeah. to where you were and where you are now, that is a massive gain. I mean, it's more than double. Yes, exactly. But one thing I should note is that, so for August of last year, I only made $962, which whatever, it's fine. But this year, August, I only have two sessions booked. So it's like making me feel really anxious, you know, like seeing that I'm like, no, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> but I'm like anxious about it. And I'm like, okay, what do I, how do I remedy this? How do I calm myself down? Like, <laughs> well, yeah. can you tell so, me what the thought is that's driving the anxious feeling? Ooh, the thought is that I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to hit my goals. And I'm worried that like, I'm not going to fill my book. So what is, what is driving that thought? Ooh, that no one is interested mm. in booking in August because it's hot, but that's a terrible thought. <laughs> right. It, it, the thing that's important to note here is it just doesn't serve you even if it's true. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah I'm sure it's going to be hot. It's like anywhere in the Southern States, I'm thinking we have a lot of friends in Florida and Texas, yeah. and it's very difficult to have a photo session outdoors. It, well, unless you do your sunrise, you know, yeah. which <laughs> is usually 
pretty decent, but okay. Yeah. Even if it's true, we don't have to think it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not going to let that thought come in. No, not gonna because it, over my day, because it, it leaves you feeling anxious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also wondering, is there a component that like, when you're looking at August of last year, you're thinking, well, there's proof August of right? last. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hate that. It's like, don't let yourself go there. <laughs> but yeah, like August of last year was like so bad. Um, and this August is like not looking like as good as June and July. And I'm like, there it is. But um, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna let that happen. <laughs> well, if you, yeah. I mean, if you're thinking like, oh, it's, it's always like, this is, I have past evidence. History proves that August is slow. This is a thing. This is how it's going to be. You have to work really hard to overcome that belief. And the first thing you can ask yourself is, does past evidence always dictate future results? No, clearly it doesn't. (laughs) Of course not. Because guess what? You could just as easily, so you're comparing this August to last August. You could just as easily compare this August to July, the month prior. Yes. Exactly. So, so why, why not look at that and say, I actually have immediate proof and evidence that this is working. Yes. Yeah. That's what I need to do. (laughs) So choose your proof. You know, I always say like people love, people love to look at past at their past as evidence of what's going to happen to which I say that does not predict future results. And if you are going to look at your past, make sure it serves you. Right. Yeah. If you smart. look at July and you think, oh, or June, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm killing it. This is amazing. Yeah. That type of evidence supports you. Yeah, totally. The other does yeah, not. I think, yeah, I think I, li- I went a little ham and like wrote down everything. And I, yeah, probably wasn't like the best move. <laughs> you know how it is. Like you get into a zone, you're like, I'm just going to write down everything, not just the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fine. It's yeah. all, everything that comes up is all worth examining. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so how yeah. does that feel for you? Like, do you feel like you've moved from an unintentional model to an intentional model? Or do we need to dig a little more? I think, I think I need to dig a little bit more because <laughs> I feel like I'm still like, I know that like, so like, it's been hot. Like I've been booking people like crazy for June, July. So like, I think I'm just feeling a little stuck. Like why a- another thought I've been having too, is like, I feel like people maybe need a special or some incentive to book me in the months that are not as, um, uh, what's the right word? The months are not like as exciting, like fall sessions, like yeah, everyone favorable. Wants fall mm-hmm. sessions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Favorable. Yes. So like, that's been my mindset too. And I'm like, I don't want to discount every single session just to get, (laughs) just to get people in the door, you know, but. So what would you say are the desirable months? For, for Arizona, I'd say it's probably October, November, and then like the spring, because we have some blooms and like people go crazy for the springtime. Um, But I've been like. June, July, I've been busy. So, and those are not so interesting. Months. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> I also classic. ran specials. <laughs> right. Oh, you did or didn't? I did. So, I ran um, the calendar contest and then the art gallery. I was that, that helped fill our books. And then I also ran a special where people who weren't, didn't win the calendar contest or win the gallery spot, they got a discount. So, that's how I filled my books that way is like offering them a special deal. So, my do I want to offer more deals? Like it's not a huge deal, but it's just like, well, you know what you? I mean? Like I, I'm thinking about it just cause like, I don't want it to come out of a place of desperation though, mm. if that makes sense. No, you know what I mean? Sure. Like I don't want mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to like feel like a scarcity, like mm-hmm. buy now, buy now. Like I don't want that feeling, but also I feel like maybe I should offer some special, like only like three or four sessions at this price or something like that. Just Well, what's interesting just now was your choice of words. So what you were alluding to was you want to love your reasons for offering the discount. I have no problems with specials, discounts, none of it. As long as you love your reasons and they're coming from a place of abundance and excitement. And this is what I want to do, which is what you were, that's exactly what you said. But then 
in the next breath, you said, I should offer these. Right. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just sounds because, like obligation. Should sounds like, like yeah. 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 It sounds like an obligation. You were so right. Yeah. Yeah. You I didn't say I want to. You said I should. Yeah, I should. Gross. <laughs> I don't like that feeling. <laughs> no, because it that to me sounds like, oh, I have to do this. Yes. Versus yeah, I want in to. Order to. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to do it. Hmm. I need to sit on that. On I mean, the question feelings. is yeah. seriously, do you want to continue to offer specials? You know, they work. Yeah. They get yeah, you clients. You had a $10,000 revenue month. So, you know, yeah. there's not a problem. Is there a problem? Right. There's not, I'm, I'm not missing out on money. I'm already at like 10 grand for this month too. So <laughs> like it's working. So why not? Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, it's answer the question. Thing. It's working, so why not do it? Question? Yeah, why why not? Yeah. There is no reason to not do it because like it's not hurting me. It's not devaluing. Like the clients I'm bringing in are valuable. Like mm -hmm. they're purchasing mm -hmm. the highest package. Um they're my ideal clients. Like it's not like it's drawing in people I don't want. Okay, so this yeah. is interesting. <laughs> it's working. You're making money. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. So where was why the problem? I don't know. <laughs> I think I just like, I, I feel like I'm doing the same thing every, mm. the last few months and I don't want to come off like, uh, like I'm always running specials, but also only certain people get those emails. So mm -hmm. I have to remember not the entire mass of followers get those emails. But what's wrong okay. with always running specials? There isn't. I don't think there is. I don't think people will get like tired of it. Right. Or I wonder like, if that's what your brain this. was conjuring up. I think my brain was envisioning what people like maybe other photographers are like seeing like, oh, she's always running a special, like, you know you, what I mean? And like, that's because they paid that close attention to you. Right. Everyone's watching me. No. Nobody cares. Nobody, Nobody notices. Cares. Nobody even notices. They don't no. even get my emails. Like, how would they know? But yeah. how would they know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm like creating this weird audience in my, my brain. <laughs> of like people who are judging me <laughs> and they just don't matter so <laughs> it's what real. we do it's like we try to question and examine every angle especially the negative ones to try to like make sense of what we're doing or come up with the best approach or what are the pros and cons what is the you know like what would be the problem here the possibilities if I do it this way if I don't do it this way and that's not horrible in of itself. I mean, it's, it's a worthwhile yeah. exercise to examine the bigger picture, but right. it is also important to ask yourself, this is what I do. I'm not kidding. I'm like, how did, are you creating a problem where there is not one? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I 100% do that <laughs> all the time. I do it all the time. Yeah. There's nothing <laughs> wrong here. Now, again, yeah. don't confuse this with like, we need to periodically examine our marketing approach. Yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> but what I, what it sounds to me like you've been doing with these specials and different things is you're like testing and you're, and there's some variety and nuance to it and who gets it and what it looks like. And that's just what a scientist would do. A CEO would experiment. Right. Yeah. Oh, I like that mindset. I'm experimenting. I'm a CEO yeah. <laughs> and my right. job is to experiment. I'm trying new things. Um, but you know, I have this thing in my head where I'm like, I'm the CEO. I should be a scientist. I should be experimenting as long as I'm protecting the profit. Yes. So I'm not yeah. doing anything that's wildly risky. Right. Because you're still, you still brought in 10 K almost 11. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as you are experimenting and protecting the profit, let's go. Yeah. There's let's no problem. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's just your brain. So it's just, not your fault. It's, yeah. It's just it's really not. It's not being very nice to me. So <laughs> it offers up all kinds of scenarios. And um, I posted this in Elevate recently. I think you may have seen it. I said, How about you stop listening to your brain and you start talking to it? Yeah. <laughs> there is a constant narrative 
that is playing beneath the surface that we're listening to and completely unaware of. And if yeah. you just start paying attention, even a little bit, like a couple of times a day, you're like, what am I thinking right now? Oh, my brain's offering me this. And then you talk to your brain, you're like, no, 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 no. I've got this. I'm figuring it yeah. out. Your opinion is noted. Thank you. Yeah. Sit down and shut up. I told my brain last <laughs> week several times to sit down and shut up. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. So what are your thoughts now on the specials? Um, I feel like I would like to do them and it's not something that I should be doing, <laughs> but it's something that I would like to do. And I'm going to experiment with some new ideas. Um, so it's not going to be the exact same, but. <laughs> and, yeah. and August is going to be phenomenal. Oh yes. That's the most important part. August is going to be good. Yes. Running that like if you that. just <laughs> decide ahead of time, everything is working and it, because think about it, Monica, what's the difference between July 31st and August 1st? There's like nothing. nothing. What's the really difference nothing. between, you know, the end of August and the beginning of September? I always talk about this, like at the end of the year, like it, it's not magical December to January, December 31st to January 1st. It's, it's like nothing magical happens. It's just this like in our minds, this construct of like, oh, this is, and it can be good. Like, oh, I'm going to reset. Yeah. I'm going to start over. But if it's hindering you and you're thinking July is phenomenal and August is going to be terrible. Yeah. What's the What's yeah. the difference between There's July 31st difference. and August 1st? There's none. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> there are 31 days in July, right? I have that. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I always okay. forget. I have to sing the song. And... Sing the song. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. But the point is there's like nothing magical happens when the calendar changes. Right. Except yeah. what you tell your brain. Because right. think about it this way. If it was like September 30th into October 1st, your mind would be going, oh, we're going into a great month. This is a highly desirable yeah. month. Everybody's going to love it. This is great. I mean, yeah. why are photographers so busy in the fall? Right. Is it because they <laughs> think, no, they know, they think they yeah. know that they're going to be busy. No, that's a busy time. Okay. Yeah. yeah they count it on it. <laughs> Correct. Because you say it is. But yeah. then those same people will say, oh, I can't shoot in the winter, like our winters, which I yeah. equivalent to your summers. Yep. Yep. Just when I heard Jess say that, like when she, I think it was Jess that like switched yes, that she did. mindset, I was like, I can, I can do that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> it was a huge shift for her because she lives very close to me and our winters can be kind of rough. And she would always say nothing happens in the first quarter. January through March is just dead. It's just what it is. Yeah. It's Pittsburgh. It's great. It's dreary. It's snowy. Yeah, it's cold. It's awful. And then one year, she decided to just change her thought. Okay, Jess did not change the weather. <laughs> she changed yeah. her thoughts about the weather. She just decided it doesn't matter. Yeah, get excited and, about it. And it didn't. And she had her best quarter ever. And she has, a, that was maybe two years ago. And she has ever since killed it in the first quarter just because she That's decided. Awesome. So if you yeah. decide that August is a bad month, so be it. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's Exactly. But if it's August is your month. best month. Yeah. <laughs> then you can figure happen. anything out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What other thoughts are coming up? Oh boy. What other thoughts? Um, I wrote down some notes here. Ba, ba, ba. Trying to think. Oh, um, I don't know if they're like really thoughts, but like things like I want to work on. Like, so I launched my not launch I did my re-enrollment or enrollment for my club in June right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I started looking and I was like uh okay so my next enrollment would be in December and I don't think I want to do December because it's like in the middle of like everything right like the holidays like people are missing those emails I think the last time I did enrollment in December I think I got like two or three people signed up which mm wasn't you know uh, you know how I am with my goals so I, I expect everyone to sign up yeah yeah <laughs> so I'm wondering if I should do another sign up at the end of August to try to capture those people that had a session with me last year and maybe you're wanting a fall session and can get on a payment plan type thing could you do and, both oh I could do both I could do August and December that's an idea 
and then capture all those people that had the new people had a session with us and thought, why are you so smart? No, okay. no, that was just an idea. <laughs> um, I'll tell you the experience. Listen to what happened. Listen to this. So I always said, I said the exact same thing. Nothing happens in December. I'm really busy in December. I love the holidays. There's a lot of parties yes. and baking and just so much fun. Yeah. And so I assumed everyone else was busy in December too. It's the holidays. And I think that's probably a fair assumption. People yeah. are busy. It's Christmas. It's the end of the year. Okay. And then yeah. one year I decided to challenge that thinking. And it was 2019, December of 2019. I launched Elevate for the first time in wow. December. <laughs> in my mind going into it, I had my old negative thoughts, which are, oh my gosh, this is a mistake. Everybody's too busy. This is, I should be doing, I should have done it sooner or later or whatever. Oh, right. so up in my head. And then I was like working on my thoughts and I, I wanted to do it. So I just went for it because I thought, what's the worst that could happen? Okay. Let's say it's not as good as I could do it again in January or February. Like yeah. it's not the end of the world. And it was my, one of my biggest launch. Well, it was the first one. So it was the oh biggest God. at the time. Yeah, but it's huge. And that December I'm in, I, by the way, I launched it and people paid for it to start in January. So it was ahead of time. Wow. And at that point, that was the most money i had ever made in one month is that elevate launch in December. That's amazing. And it blew, blew all of my thoughts out the window. Like it just yeah. wasn't true. And I'm, I'm wondering now that I look back, if I didn't do that sort of on purpose to just like test my own theory, I love doing stuff like that. Like proving, <laughs> proving myself right or wrong. Or I don't know. These silly <laughs> things. But I, I then said, okay, that's just a thought. Yeah. December's not good because people are busy is a thought. It and might be true, thought. but you don't have to believe it. Yeah. But is it a thought that like, I feel like when you think that, that you and your offer, is it a priority to them or exciting to them? A hundred percent. You make it, yeah. everything becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if yeah. you think everybody's busy, it comes out mm -hmm. in your messaging and your marketing and you, yeah. you, um, you hesitate because you think, um, by the way, hesitation goes in the action line of the model. So think about this. Right. The thought is yeah. everybody's busy. You're feeling maybe defeated ahead of time, by the way, right. disappointed ahead of time. And in the action line, things like procrastination, hesitation, you know, maybe you don't send as many emails because you don't want to bother people. Right. I don't want to like fill up their inbox and annoy right. people. Yeah. I don't want to contribute to that. And then yeah. guess what the result is? Yeah. December's no good. You just yeah. proved it. I but know. if you're, yeah. <laughs> you're thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to love this. This is a great Christmas present. This is such a unique right. idea. Who wouldn't love oh this? Gosh. This is a great deal. And I, that's what I thought about launching Elevate. I had this new concept and I was like, yeah. this is brilliant. It's amazing. It's, it's going to help so many people. As a result, I was excited. Oh yeah. So what yeah. would you need to think to feel excited about December? I honestly, I'm such a holiday person. I really want to push it as like holiday, like the best holiday gift you could give to your family, like photos for the year done. <laughs> so yeah. exciting. Yeah. And the next year they get their photo album, right? And they can gift it. Yeah. And I'm if, at, if <laughs> at the same time you, so you're doing June, December, but if you want to test like August, February, March, whatever that would be, like, if you want to yeah. test rolling into different months, yeah. like why not do both? Right. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. And then guess what? You'll have so much data. You'll be able to see like, okay, June, December performed better or worse or about the same as the, you know, like you'll be able to look at it, but you have to go into both of those or those launches at different times with clean thinking because you could distort yes. the data if you've got crappy thoughts. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> so good. Okay, let's wrap up. Last minute questions, thoughts, challenges. Uh uh, I'm trying to think why am I stalling I have like all these notes here I'm like looking down I'm like what else can I work on 
I need to visit more businesses. I know that's for sure. We're going to go do that today. So I'm trying to think of what else I can think of. Did you have, yeah, um, you did. You saw that post in Elevate where I went through how everyone had booked clients in the last several months. There were 48 yes. items on that list, 48 ways people in Elevate yes. had booked clients. And then I categorized them into three different categories in person or like referral word of mouth type things. SEO and social media. And out of the 48, three came from social media. Three. Only and three. And we, I feel like so many of us like worry about social media, like, oh, I'm not posting enough. I'm not interacting enough. Yeah. It's and it was to like get out there. Three from social media, nine from SEO, and the rest. So the overwhelming majority came from in person referrals or word of mouth. Yeah. So where should you spend your time? Out with the people. So yes, go meet the businesses, go meet the people, whatever it takes to get out into your community. Yeah, gonna go do it. Yeah, today we're gonna go to a rescue that one of our friends is like a medical director at. So we're gonna go hang out with them for a little bit, give them some adoption cards and try to capture their adopters. Oh, yes, yes. Yep, I'm all about that. People and get more email addresses. That's what I'm all about. (laughs) That's what I need to do. Yes. I've been trying to sign up. So I've been finding more events that are indoors in Phoenix, like markets. So I've been Mm -hmm. trying to like get our, I think I was just like a little late, like some, like I'll find out about one. I'm like, do you have any more spots? And they're like, no, Mm. we're full. Like, dang it. So I have to be like more mindful when I'm searching for those events next year. (laughs) Cause I think I was searching the wrong keywords. Yeah. If if you're not able to get in, do you still go just to walk around and yeah. yeah. So like, I'll usually go and like, I thought about just like bringing my camera with me and just like having it like on my hip. Like Always. it doesn't matter if I don't take photos, like just bring my fancy camera with me. Always. And people are going to be like, yeah. You know why? <laughs> oh I would take my camera everywhere and people would know me as the lady with the camera, the big fan. Cause I would have like the 70 to 200. Yeah. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. it's noticeable. It's so smart. And people will talk to you because they're curious. You know, a lot of people like photography. So always, always take your camera, always go to any and all community events. We had this, um, I live in a very, very small rural township. And we had this event a couple of days ago called Safety Day, which was really bizarre. But anyway, (laughs) it's so random. It was so random, but I was so curious. And I was like, so my daughter and I went, I'm like, let's go to Safety Day. I don't know. And so- I'm explaining to her, like from a business perspective, she's in marketing in college. Like, you know, if you're in your community, so for instance, there was a woman there who had a booth and she does balloon animals and she hosts parties and will come to your house and come to your event and do all of these things. And she had a booth and she had her cards and she had everything set up. And I just, I was like, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you're in the community and you're meeting people. I'm like, I'm going to hire her for something. She's doing these balloons. Yeah. So fun. But then if you couldn't get a booth, you could still show up and walk show around up. with your big fancy camera and talk yeah. to people. I talk yeah. to everybody. And I, you know, people would come up to me and be like, Hey, Heather, good. Day. And I'm like, Oh, what? you know, like there's just so many people in the community that yeah. I know because I'm always showing up uh, my face. Yes. My feet are on the Smart. pavement out in yeah. my community always. <laughs> Sing your face. Yep. Feet on the pavement. I love that. Yes. Like gorilla marketing. Like, let's just get out in the yeah. community and meet people. It All works, types. obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Keep us updated inside of Elevate and I will talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, Christy, give us an update. What's happening over there? Uh, well, I'm actually in Colorado visiting my parents right now. So kind of taking a little bit of a break, but what I've done recently this month is I've kind of scaled everything back. So my goal is to do two to three clients a month, kind of really too structured and then end end of life session one or two, if I really am feeling good about it, um, just kind of in terms of where my energy level is, what travel I have kind of coming up through the next few months. So that's kind of where I've scaled that back. Um, and then progressing into that also knowing that I still want to hit my revenue goal. Now I've kind of scaled back to $5,000 a month. I do have to increase my prices in order to be able to meet that goal. 
Um, so, and I think there's, there's definitely some underlying costs in there. And I think we talked about that last time a little bit more of like, oh yeah, you like kind of start to add these little things, elevate the brand a little bit more. So want to factor that in. Um, so haven't quite finished my pricing. Um, but I do have, a um, a call scheduled with Jess to like actually go through that. So like, that's basically my deadline. I'm like, you actually have to have this like semi in a place that's rep or presentable, um, to get that done. Um, I've had some really good clients come through, um, a couple just like out of the blue found me online or found, you know, a flyer of mine that's hanging around town. Um, so that's been good. And then, um, just a couple people, you know, kind of have done the magic email and no response and that's okay. Um, just kind of have to let those go. I think I've done everything that I can do and I feel confident about that, um, really going forward. So. And you're yeah. doing well in terms of your marketing and getting the number of inquiries that are generating the correct number of clients. Yes. Yeah. I think I could probably go better. Like I would like to have more inquiries on a monthly basis. I'm probably kind of tinkering somewhere between like around five a month. Mm -hmm. I would prefer mm -hmm. that to be closer to 10. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think for me right now, it's kind of like, I want that, but I also have to realize like what is coming down the pipeline in terms of like first quarter is going to be shut off <laughs> for, um, yeah, but, but hold on. I would, I would like, watch wait, that. That's a dangerous yeah. thought Yeah, because you can always put people on your wait list. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we I, never listen. This is like, I'm going to make this up. This is like the number one rule that I'm making up right now. We never, ever want to purposefully slow inquiries ever, yeah. even in seasons when we cannot accept them. So for in your case, you're going to be taking some time off, but mm -hmm. wouldn't you rather have those inquiries maybe on a wait list than yeah. I never do. I want to slow them down on the front end ever. True. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah. I yeah, can I slow it down on the back end because you can decide, yeah. obviously you decide how many you accept. Uh-huh. And whatever overflow there is, hallelujah, let's get on a wait list. Yes, yes. Because what if you could like significantly increase your inquiries in the next, I don't know, three to four months mm -hmm. and have enough of a wait list built up that when you come back to work after your maternity leave, mm -hmm. there is a slew of clients just in the pipeline, ready to go. And it's just a matter of getting them booked in on the calendar. Wouldn't that be lovely? Yes, that would be lovely. Right. Cause then it's like, it's like a little bit of what we talked about previously of like coming back to my business and then knowing that it's going to be in a good place where ready. I'm ready and mm -hmm. able to take action. Right. Yes. Um, so yeah, that definitely makes sense. Like getting that structure and the process and the systems in place so that inquiries are coming in and, you know, that they're being communicated with, um, and shown the proper information so that when I do come back, it's, Hey, yeah, let's go ahead and get you booked in. Um, I want to meet your adorable dog, um, and take some photos. Of yeah, absolutely. And I, I would think that, and we, I, we did talk about this, but like actually getting people scheduled for spring next year, even if they're just penciled in approximate date, um, yeah. but what I'd like to see happen is that some of these people submit a retainer. Yes. Yeah. Get their session fee paid. Like yes. contract is signed. Like that would be the ideal. Correct. Cause I really, I don't even want to start the wait list until probably mid December. Right. When people are like, oh, I really want to do this and I'm going to buy the gift certificate for myself. And it's going to be like, yes, that's awesome. We're going to get you booked in April or May. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. So let's talk about these. Well, before we talk about inquiries, do you have any challenges or obstacles that you are working on? I don't think so. I feel very clear headed in terms of kind of what I want to continue to accomplish leading up to maternity leave. Um, and like, I think some of it, there are some thoughts like that are farther out that I'm like, well, I kind of have to get there when I get there. Mm. Um, that yeah, maybe like sometimes creep in and what I do kind of try to tell like, ah, pause. That's not necessarily the priority at the moment. The priority at the moment is, you know, continuing marketing, making sure that I'm getting out into the community, meeting people, getting them to inquire, waitlist, all that good stuff. Um, so that's really kind of where 
I don't think I really truly have like major, major Mm -hmm. blocks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about these inquiries. You said you're getting about five ish a month and your, your goal is to book two to three. So are you booking that number right now? I'm not, I do have a couple people generally like two generally fall off. Um, they're all get like an end of life and then I'll get like another person to, I'll send the booking proposal with a contract and everything. And I'll say it expires on this date, follow up with them once it gets closer. Um, generally what I do is I open it one more time, um, for them to be able to go in and book. I send them a communication. Sometimes I even text them just to give them a heads up. Hey, maybe this fell off your radar. Try to get it in. And then once that kind of expires again, I kind of send that magic email of like, I would love to photograph your pet. Like, but if this is not the right time, I completely understand. I will be here when, and if you're ready to come back and just kind of leave that most, I have a feeling, you know, people are traveling for the summer. Some people might, you know, be like, oh shoot, I wanted to do this in September. Mm. I want to do it for the holidays or something like that. So I don't know. I think people's behaviors and people's schedules just kind of dictate a little bit more of that for them. So just kind of coming back to that. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that's kind of where I have gotten some follow-up and I'm okay with that. Um, Now, I think in order to get the percentages of people that I want, maybe you want to increase my inquiries a little bit more. So Well, correct, because there's always a conversion rate. Yeah, exactly. Right, so we're trying to determine what is your average conversion rate? And it's possible that we, we need some more data, but you yeah. know, if you get 10 inquiries and you book one, well, we probably need to look at the system or the process or where disconnects could be. And I, I mean, I don't think that there's like a, in this case, a general rule for what a good conversion rate is, but I mean, I would, what would we want it to be? What if we could, okay, not, and not a hundred percent, of course, a hundred percent of the people that inquire book. Yeah. That's not realistic, but yeah. realistically, what does your gut tell you about a conversion rate in your business? I think somewhere in the 40%, right? Mm-hmm. Because I'm going to get inquiries on end of life where I'm either not going to be able to accommodate it or the pet's going to pass away. Right. Like, and that's definitely happened where I'm like, Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. Like Oops, that really yeah. is that, and it's like, it's a sucky situation. So to me, like 40 to 50 feels like a good. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. So in order to get two to three a month, we need, you know, at least six inquiries yeah. or you had actually said, I wrote this down. You had said, um, you get around five now and you would like to get 10. And I think that that's great. Where do your current inquiries come from? Um, okay. So some of them are coming. Have you ever heard of the Tilly project? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that some of them come through an inquiry from that based on end of life. Um, some are Google search. I would say that like those probably combined would probably be like in the 20 to 30%. Mm -hmm. Um, and then whether it's like a specific marketing campaign that I have, that's probably about 50% uh, of what if that, and then like random events or something like that. Like mm-hmm. other, other, I would say the catch all is like, I don't know what, what's left after that. Maybe 20%. Yeah. Uh, if I can do my math. Right. 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 Uh, what I'd like to challenge you to do is get yeah. really clear on these numbers. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, wait. Yeah. So I posted an elevate. I talked about this with Monica yesterday too. Out of the um, 48, 48 comments were on that post about people booking clients. And out of the 48, three came from social media and nine came from SEO and the rest came from Mm -hmm. in-person referrals or word of mouth. So when you have that kind of data, it gets really clear. I'm like where I, yes. And like where I should actually spend my time. Yes, correct. So, um, you know, that shows me that for the most part, and that came from a variety of different photographers, different Mm -hmm. genres. So for the most part, we're seeing that a large, large, like 80% of these clients are coming from in-person word of mouth referrals, large portion. But Mm -hmm. there is a senior photographer I know that is probably evenly split between word of mouth and Facebook. But when I look at her Facebook, 
her Facebook is because of word of mouth. Like she shoots a senior, that senior share. So it's like a combination of the two. So social media plays a very small, very, very small role in this. But if you know specifically your clients in your market and you figure out that 75% of your clients come from these events, I don't know, I'm making this up. Then you're like, oh, I just need to do more events. I need to meet more people at more events. Yeah. We know that that's like where to spend the time, where to dedicate time to like research, which one should I go to? Which ones are worthwhile, right? Doing that and connecting yeah. with businesses that host them too, right? Becoming building relationships there. Correct. And I and I don't mind experimenting. I'm all about experimenting. But if I'm gonna throw darts at a dartboard, I don't want to have a blindfold on. No, yeah. You want to have general direction. Right? Yes. Like, I know which way the wind is blowing. Yes. Be like, yes. Maybe <laughs> <it's over here." laughs> right. I need to know in general which way the wind is blowing. So I can, I just, it's just going to be more focused in terms of your efforts. Yeah. No, that's so if we want to increase inquiries and we want to increase our wait list, then mm-hmm. we need to figure out where these people are coming from and then multiply that. Yeah. Okay. Any challenges, anything concerning you coming up? No, I feel like right now my brain is just like, action mm. <laughs> like, the state of action of like I know what needs to get done and so now it's just like getting in and now I have a, a a nice little homework assignment to go back and do a little bit more digging on the data to really think about that um but I do think that will be helpful especially like as you get as I think about the new phase of life next year um too of like okay if I want to like I want to be super targeted with my time where do I spend my time? What's the most brings the most value? Um, do you get a lot of referrals? Like do current clients refer future clients? I get some, I need one of them. I've had a lot of people want to go on my referral list. And so I have like, honestly, haven't gotten to like building out my digital referral card and I want to do it digitally so that they can just like text it to their friends. Mm. Instead of doing like physical cards, people are just going to lose those everywhere. Um, So I know what I want to do. I think that's my August goal uh, (laughs) along with pricing. So, um, and just sharing that with people. Cause I have had some really great, great clients that are like, I would love to take your postcards to our vet or like their haircut. Like I have wonderful clients that have been super supportive um, and just like want to share that with everyone. So that's been really great. So I just like actually need to follow through on that. (laughs) The best people to market to are the people that you already have because they already know, like, and trust you. They've worked with you. They believe in you. So I'm always asking myself, how can I leverage those relationships? Yes. Yeah. And a referral program is, is one way. I mean, but there's also just like nurturing the relationships, like periodically texting some of your best clients you know, mm-hmm. and you ask them about their dog or, Hey, I was just thinking about you. And yeah. uh, I want you to be like really top of mind for your yeah. current clients. Yeah. Because then when they have a friend that has a dog or a puppy or something, they they think of you or end of life, you know, they, I, I just like, here, here's, here are my thoughts. Like if I'm in your area and my name is Christy and I am a pet photographer, I want everybody to think of me when they think of photography and pets. Yeah. So I'm going to do whatever it takes to be top of mind for my current clients, um, past clients, any clients, all people with dogs. I mean, I'm just like, I want them to see your name over and over and over again, everywhere. Yeah. That, that builds trust. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. you know, some people need to see your name and your photos eight to 10 times or more before they decide to take action. So it's a lot of um, planting of marketing seeds just everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's that like kind of priming notion of just like, I'm here. How are you? I'm here. Correct. Hey, <laughs> I'm here. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it was, and it was awesome. I had somebody post a Christmas in July portrait of the Santa sessions that I did last year. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. And I like, thank you. The daycare that I did it with, I was like, maybe that'll be my one client in December because I'm going to be like 
huge at that point. Yeah. But <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, that's perfect. Like, thanks for just posting that. That was super organic and like, um, it's super awesome. And just like respond to that quickly. Oh, it's so fun to photograph your dog, all that fun stuff. I love that. Okay. That makes me wonder then if when you are working with your current or past clients and you send them a text message that says, Hey, I'm thinking about you. Remember our session. It was so fun. You popped into my mind. And then you have this like brief little conversation. If you couldn't say something like, Hey, when you get a chance, like reshare one of your favorite images, I would love to see which one it is. Yeah. And then they share and tag you and you have that. So one thing I loved, this is so funny. I loved it back in the day, but not, but not so much now is when my brides, it would be their anniversary and they would share their wedding photos on every single anniversary. I would get marketing from every single one of my brides, which was amazing. And the reason I don't love it so much now is because my brides are sharing their photos from 15 years ago. And, um, while I was a competent photographer 15 years ago, <laughs> I'm like, that's vintage Heather work. I, I, oh my gosh, please don't tag me. No, it's fine. It's fine. You know, but, um, I didn't, I sort of didn't think that through that they would be sharing these photos forever, every year, forever. <laughs> Oops. Okay. It's fine. It's It's so good. And for years when I still had my wedding blog up, I took it down. They would share, they would actually share the URL from the post of their wedding day on their anniversaries. And that was huge. That was, I mean, phenomenal because getting like backlinks. Correct. There, then I have people going to my site, which is helping my SEO. It's keeping top of mind. So, you know, and you don't have to be a wedding photographer to do that. Just thinking of like, how could I leverage what I already have in front of me. There's yeah. so much data, so much uh, material, so many photos, so many people that you already have in, in leveraging that. Well, I think it's just smart. Is what, that's what I think. Oh, for sure. Cause yeah, I'd like to kind of circle back to the um, conversation we had during the coaching call or the strategy call. It was like, it's not, especially after maternity leave, it's not coming back to ground zero. Like you're not starting at the beginning. You're starting from a different place. It might feel like, you know, you need to maybe do a little mechanical things, make sure things are running right. But like, you're not just starting from scratch. Um, And like, that's kind of like exactly what you said, leverage what I already have. Like I know these things. And so just kind of getting it in alignment to where I want to see it continue to progress, I think will really help. I love that visual. I just pictured like you've got to oil the gears. Like I know, I was like the machine. thinking about a car. I'm like, okay, yes. well, I haven't been driven in 15 years, but we're going to go and we're going to look at some stuff. <laughs> you're at a new point. Yeah, your business won't stop. You'll just be at a new point, but you'll be further ahead than where you were. And because we're working so closely together, I think this is the perfect opportunity for you to set up systems and processes and plans So that when you do, you know, open the doors, Mm -hmm. it's like, it's almost like you didn't miss a beat, you know, it's like, you're just right back into it. Exactly. And yeah, and that's kind of like one of the reasons I wanted to pull back for the second half of this year, a little bit, kind of shrink the client base a little bit more and then get like, really get that stuff nailed down so that it feels like when I come back, it's like, it's structured, it feels good. Cause like, I think in my mind, the structure is going to help me create the freedom that I want. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that will be a huge beneficial piece of that. Overall, what would you say your general feeling is about your business right now? I think like confident, like calm and confident. That's great. Like going, knowing that the actions I'm taking today are like helping to paint the picture for tomorrow. Um, And that, yes, I don't have a clear visual of like what that is. It's more of an abstract painting right Mm -hmm. now. (laughs) It's not realism. Um, But when it does become realism, I know I'm going to be able to tweak things the way I want them to be like to be able to work for me. I think that that's great. The calm, confident feeling is coming from the thought that this is working. I know what I'm doing and I'm going to be able to figure this out. Yeah. Beautiful. Well done, Christy. Okay, great. Thanks. Let me know if you need anything and I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. Thanks. Bye-bye.